Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Amen. And Hug Sameach. Hug Sameach. Happy Hanukkah. Amen. Uh, we're going to have a great time with the Lord. And uh, we have a dinner celebration tomorrow. Amen. And we are just looking forward to it. And just uh, so excited about what our Lord, our God, our great and mighty Savior is going to do. And so we're going to go ahead and, and we are going to say a prayer. We're going to open up and we're going to light our menorah. Thank you, Yeshua, for this uh, holiday, Father. Thank you for um, Hanukkah, Father. Thank you for Shabbat. And thank you, most of all, that your presence is with us, Father. And that you anoint us, Father, that your word will go forth, breaking bondages and yoke through your precious anointing, you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for touching everybody, Lord God, that's on the other end of the Lord God, and those that are here tonight, Lord. We thank you, Lord, as you minister, Lord, to those who are ill, Lord God. Those who are having many different difficulties, Father, we know that if we give it to you, Lord God, and trust in you, that you will make all things possible. For there's nothing that is impossible for you, our great and mighty creator. <coughs> Thank you, Father God. Amen. 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 Let's go ahead and we're going to light the Hanukkah candles. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who sanctifies us with his commandments and commanded us to kindle the lights of Hanukkah. Baruch Atah, uh, blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who performed great miracles in those days at this time. Amen. Oh, we are on the seventh day of Hanukkah. To, uh, no, the sixth day. Tomorrow's the seventh, and then the eighth day is uh, the last day of light in our Hanukkah menorah. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the Shabbat candles. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to kindle the light of Hanukkah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hanukkah looks so pretty on the table. We're going to get them all lit up again tomorrow. And let's go ahead and we are going to do the Shema. The Shema. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Shema Israel Adonai And we lift up the holy city of Yerushalayim, Lord. We pray for your peace, your shalom to be upon the holy city and also over all of Eretz Israel. Lord God, from the north and the south and the east and the west, Lord. Lord God, tonight as the Hanukkah is kindled in the homes and in the 
in the streets and the highways and the byways of Israel, Lord God. We pray that Yeshua, that your light would shine, Lord, from all of the world and especially from the holy city of Jerusalem, so that people can know your shalom that surpasses all understanding. And again, we pray according to your commandment, Sha'alu Shalom, Yerushalayim, Omei. Amen. Yes, Bob, let's pray for our nation. Heavenly Father, we pray for the American brothers. The 2020 children, Father, I pray for them. For the leaders of this time, for the brothers, put their hands on their hearts together, Lord. Recognize the throne, Lord, and answer, Lord. Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, for those that are trusting you, believing in you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we continue to hold on to you, Lord. And we, Heavenly Father, a lighthouse unto you, Lord. For we love us, we know that you are going to sing yesterday, today, and forever. In your name we pray, amen. 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 Thank you, Yeshua. Okay, let's go ahead and we're just going to go ahead and we're going to enter into worship. Let's just worship the Lord with all of our hearts. And that, that's what the purpose is of gathering together. And that's the purpose that we have to be his child, to serve him. Is a, we should have that desire just to worship him, to be with him, and spend time with him. Let's just enjoy our time with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Abba.
people are going through stuff, Lord. We thank you for that shalom. We thank you for your peace, my God. We worship you by the name of you. We exalt you, Lord.
that we are overcomers, Father. We're more than overcomers. We're victorious in you, Father. Your word tells us that we're more than conquerors through you, through your blood that was shed for us, Father. You, we thank you, Lord, that your word says, by your stripes we have been healed. Every area of this temple, our mind, our bodies, our souls, our spirit. Thank you, Father. As we partake, Lord, let it come from our heart to receive what you've done for us. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's partake. As you partake, just take in your heart what he did for us, that he took our place because the wages of sin is death, and he delivered us from that, from that, giving us eternal life. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the fruit of the vine. Again, we thank you, Father, with all of our heart. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you, Lord, that you are the vine, you are the branches, Father. We are grafted and rooted into you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that nothing can take us out of your hand, Father. We thank you, nothing can pluck us out of your hand. We thank you, Lord, for your precious blood that was shed for us. We thank you, Lord, for your real HaKadosh that moves upon us right now, Father God. Receive him. Receive him. That your blood was shed for us, Father. And that we've been forgiven. We've been healed through your precious blood. And Lord, all the promises that you've given us, Father, that we will receive them and act on them. In your mighty name we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, that there's power in your blood, and it will never, your blood will never, never lose its power. Thank you, Father. Amen. Let's partake. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Right, and so my, he's wanting to do miracles in our life. So let's continue to worship him as the word comes forth. We're going to be in our Torah portion, which was in Genesis this week. We will read in Maquettes at the end of, is what it means, and the Torah portion was Genesis 41 1 through 44. In 44 through 17. The half Torah was 1 Kings 3.15 and then four, uh, chapter 4 verse 1. The Brit Hadashah was Romans 10, 1 through 3. So we are going to go over our Torah portion. We're going to uh, read a little out of uh, Genesis 41. Uh, there's so much in that. But we're going to start with Genesis 41, 14, and um, we're, going to go, we're going to go from here. Then Pharaoh summoned Yosef, and they brought him quickly out of the dungeon. He shaved himself, changed his clothes, and came in to Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to Yosef, I had a dream, and there is no one who can interpret it, but I have heard it said about you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. Yosef answered Pharaoh, It isn't in me. God will give Pharaoh an answer that will set his mind at peace. Pharaoh said to Yosef, In my dream I stood at the edge of the river, and there came up out of the river seven cows, fat and sleek, and they had been feeding in the swamp grass. 
After them, there came up out of the river seven more cows, poor, miserable-looking, and lean. I've never seen such bad-looking cows in all the land of Egypt. Then the lean and miserable cows ate up the first seven fat cows. But after they had eaten them up, one couldn't tell that they had eaten them because they were as miserable-looking as before. At this point I woke up, and I dreamed again and saw seven full ripe ears of grain growing out of a single stalk. After them, seven ears, thin and blasted by the east wind, sprang up. And the thin ears swallowed up the seven ripe ears. I told this to the magicians, but none of them could explain it to me. Yosef said to Pharaoh, The dreams of Pharaoh are the same. God has told Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good years of grain are seven years. The dreams are the same. Likewise, the seven lean and miserable looking cows that come up after them are seven years, and also the seven empty years blasted by the east wind. There will be seven years of famine. This is what I told Pharaoh. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Here it is. There will be seven years of abundance throughout the whole land of Egypt, but afterwards there will come seven years of famine, and Egypt will forget all the abundance. The famine will consume the land. The abundance will not be known in the land because of the famine that will follow, because it will be truly terrible. Why was this dream doubled for Pharaoh? Because the matter has been fixed by God, and God will shortly cause it to happen. Therefore, Pharaoh should look for a man both discreet and wise to put in charge of the land of Egypt. Pharaoh should do this, and he should appoint supervisors over the land to receive a 20% tax on the produce of the land of Egypt during the seven years of abundance. They should gather all the food produce during these good years coming up and set aside grain under the supervision of Pharaoh to be used for food in the cities, and they should store it. This will be the land's food supply for the seven years of famine that will come over the land of Egypt, so that the land will not perish as a result of the famine. The proposal seemed good to both Pharaoh and to all his officials. Pharaoh said to his officials, Can we find anyone else like him? The Spirit of God lives in him. So Pharaoh said to Yosef, Since God has shown you all this, there is no one as discerning and as wise as you. You will be in charge of my household. All my people will be ruled by what you say. Only when I rule from my throne will I be greater than you. Amen. Thank you. We're going to stop there. And there's just uh, so much, again, in these pair shots. You just you don't have enough time to go study them. So I just want to do it over and over. Just, uh, there's so much to it, and it gets greater and greater as, as we continue. So uh, we know what happened to Joseph by reading the previous uh, chapters where we were at. Joseph was sold by his brothers to Potiphar. And uh, God was with Joseph, and God helped Joseph and helped him uh, prosper in where he was. And um, so we're going to start from there, where we see that Joseph had been in prison. And um, <clears throat> after being, being in prison, Pharaoh had a dream. Nobody could interpret that dream. And <laughs> they remembered finally about Joseph interpreting dreams. And so God opened the door for Joseph to be able to come out and actually lift up the name of God and help Pharaoh to understand how to uh, rule his, his country and help uh, his people. So let's go for it here. We're going to start there. And Miketz is talking about at the end of. So we go over the series of things that happened in the life of Joseph. We see we see at the end of, or we can't we see at the end of all that Joseph had gone through, how Yahweh was with Joseph, how Yahweh prospered him, making him a great leader, blessing him spiritually and physically. Joseph was a prisoner in Egypt, yet he ministered to Pharaoh by giving him the word of Adonai. The words of Adonai, he explained that Pharaoh's dream, which uh, bought, brought Pharaoh Shalom, we just read it, and helped Pharaoh when Joseph was able to interpret what he had, <laughs> he had dreamed. 
So the words of God that Joseph brought to Pharaoh interpreting the dream gave Pharaoh shalom and it gave him relief from his distress. So we understand it was all in the plan of Adonai. Joseph was obedient to Adonai. Joseph not only heard the voice of Adonai, but he acted on the word that God spoke to him. I want to say that again. Joseph not only heard what Yahweh was saying to him, he acted on what Yahweh spoke to him. What is that? Faith and works. It is also be a doer of the word. This is what he tells us to do. We have to not only hear, but we have to act on it. The Bible says if we only hear and we don't do, then we are deceiving ourselves. So Joseph believed God. He trusted him. He acted on what the Lord told him. Even interpreting the dream, he heard the voice of God. He didn't doubt that that was God. He knew that was the spirit of Adonai giving him the words to the dream. And he wasn't afraid to speak it. He spoke it. And so you, when you're not afraid and you step out and do what God tells you to do, he's going to bless you. And God's name is going to be lifted up. Amen. So a lot of us doubt God. When we hear the voice of God, we say, was that really God? Well, if you were praying and you were seeking God, asking God to use you, you heard the word of God. You need to read it, confirm it, and go with the word of God. You know, because a lot of us, the devil will tell us all these things in our minds. So we will say, no, that wasn't God. And we know it was God. So 1 Peter 5.10 says, we know that Joseph had, uh, I'll, I'll, be, I'll come right back to that. But we know that Joseph had gone through many trials and tribulations, a lot of them. But it only helped him become strong. He went through these things, but he became stronger. 1 Peter 5.10 says, You will have to suffer only a little while. After that, God, who is full of grace, the one who called you to his eternal glory in the union with the Messiah, will himself restore, establish, and strengthen you and make you firm. And then Romans 8, 18 says, I don't think the sufferings we are going through now are even worthy. They're not even worth comparing with the glory that shall be revealed in us in the future. So God is telling us, you know, we, we will suffer, but it's only for a little while. Even though our days may be over 100 years, days here on the earth, we were going to suffer, but that is just a little while. That's just a little time to God. We will be overcomers, amen? It's only going to be for a little while. Whatever we go through, whatever tri tribulation, whatever trials we go through, is only going to be for a little while. Because our mighty God, full of grace, the one who has called us to his eternal glory and to unite with Messiah, he himself is going to restore. He's going to restore us. He's going to establish. And he's going to strengthen us. And he's going to make us firm in him. And again, whatever we go through, is not here on earth will not be able to compare with our, what the mighty God has for us. Hallelujah. You know, so Yahweh had to live on the throne of Joseph's heart. Joseph had to love Adonai with all of his heart, mind, strength. It's because he was obedient and he moved in him. We have to love God with all of our heart. We have to love him with everything that is within us. I mean, everything that is within us. And we can say, you know, we can say with our mouth, I'm going to serve you, Lord. I'm going to love you, Lord. I'm going to this, I'm going to that. But if it doesn't come from our hearts, it's not going to be, it's not going to, it's not there. It's not real. So that when we go through these trials and tribulations, you may turn from God because your heart has not really let God reign on it. You've not really let God reign and rule in your heart. So when you go through these trials, you go through these tribulations, if you have truly the love of God, trust in God and let him rule your heart, you're going to be able to make it through. And he's going to strengthen you. 
And it does. And he's going to make work everything out. You know? All things work together for, for the good of those who are who love God. All the evil Joseph experienced in his life, it only gave him more strength and love for Adonai. The trials, tribulations that Joseph went through caused him to humble all of his self unto God. Not part, but all of his self unto God. And from the depth of his heart, he could actually cry out, not my will, but your will be done. How many of us can actually cry from the depths of our heart with the true meaning? And Lord, not my will, but your will be done. I don't care what it looks like. Lord God, I'm going to trust you. Your will be done because you know best. Because you love me. And I know that you'll be with me. Lord, not my will, but your will be done. When going through a trial or in the middle of tribulation, our flesh tries to get in the way of God's work. Uh, you may hear yourself questioning God when you're going through tribulations or trials. You may hear yourself doubting God. And you might even say, what did I do wrong? You know, when we talk like that, it opens the door. It gives the devil an open door to kick and knock down at our faith and our trust in God. And we start doubting God. We start, and, and our faith starts getting lower and lower. And our, our trust starts going away from God. We might say, and we've probably all been here. You might say, I have been doing everything right. I've been doing everything I know to do. I've fasted. I've prayed. I've been giving. I'm loving my neighbor, obeying the Lord. I'm reading. I'm walking by faith with Adonai. What did I do wrong? What did I do wrong, God? Why has God allowed me to go through such heartbreaking experiences? Why am I having to go through this? Does God not care about me? Does he not love me? Am I not saved? I don't understand. Something's wrong. Why? Why, God? Why me? For one, if we know that we have sinned against God, then we need to repent. Do all that we can do and trust our life, even if the answer is not what we want. If, the, if we allow these questions, if we know that we've done everything, that we know what to do, then we need to trust God. We need to love him and say, God, I'm trusting you no matter what I'm going through. I love you. I know you love me, and I know that you're going to get me through this, Father. I, re I will not listen to the voice of the enemy. I'm not going to be de depressed. I'm not going to think on the bad things. I'm going to think on the pure, the good, and the lovely things that you have done and are going to do. You know, King David, Lost it when his son was sick. He cried and he fasted for his son. He's fallen on the floor before God, you know, asking God to heal his son, that his son would not die. And so he was fasting and crying out to God. I believe it was seven days. He did everything he knew to do, but his son died. Have we been in that place where we've done that and cried out to God? Maybe even pray for somebody's healing, but that person passed away. Well, when David's men came to him to see how he was doing, to tell him that his son died, died David knew it. David got up. He accepted the answer. And David got up. He cleaned himself. And he went to the house of God and worshipped. No matter that his son was dead. He went to the house and he worshiped God for what he did, for what God did, for what God told him. It wasn't what David wanted, but it was according to God's will. And David told his people, uh, 2 Samuel 2.16, when you get a chance, go over it and read it. But Yahweh knew, David knew, he said, someday I'm going to be with him. He can't come back to me. He said, then I'm going to go to him so that he was going to be with his son. One day, amen, we may lose our loved ones here, but one day we're going to be with them again if they are in the Lord. What a beautiful thing, though, that they are in a 
beautiful place. They're in the place that they long for. They're in the place that they look forward to, to be with the Lord. <coughs> Hallelujah. We, we, we will, a lot of times we're going to, I mean, this is life. So we're going to lose people that we care about on this earth because we're mortal men. It hurts and we will suffer for a little while. But Yeshua gives us the strength to overcome the pain and overcome the grief, to continue to worship God and to complete the work that he has given us here on this earth. This is why it's important for us, while we are alive, to pray for our loved ones and friends and to preach the word of God, speak the gospel to everyone that they may be saved and we will meet again, reunite again. So when Joseph was going through all of the, those heartbreaking situations, I don't know about you, but I can't even imagine how he must have felt. He was all alone. He was in a foreign place. He was hurt, probably in shock that they, his brothers would do such a thing. He was in the hands of foreigners and his own loved ones handed him over to them in hands of maybe prejudiced people, anti-God people, people that he would be a slave to. He would have to humble himself to his enemy and to serve them, and he never did anything wrong. He could have cried out to God, what did I do to deserve this? But Joseph set out to minister to others. Even in the bad times, he set his heart on God. Hallelujah, knowing and trusting God. So in the middle of tribulation, tribulations, we can cry out to Adonai. He will hear you if you cry out to him. He's merciful and he's kind. He loves us. He will never leave us. He's never going to forsake us. Adonai has heard every prayer and he's seen every tear and has stored those tears in a bottle. Psalms 56, 8 through 9. Your number, you number my wanderings. Put my tears into your bottle. Are they not in your book? When I cry out to you, then my enemies will turn back. This I know God is for me. So King, King David said in the midst of all the tro troubling time, this I know God is for me. Hallelujah. And in God I trust. I shall not be afraid of what men can do to me. Hallelujah. You see, God absolutely responds to the tears of everyone. The trials and tribulations from this world can bring to us tears and heartbreak, but Yeshua sent the Ruach HaKadosh to comfort us, amen? Praise God, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing, nothing, nothing. If we love him and we stand with him, hallelujah, he's not gonna leave us, so let us not leave him. Through our trials, we learn to walk by faith we need to be on guard, uh, not to be questioning, not to allow Satan to attack, to, to in, enter in, even if he does attack us. Hallelujah. Satan, if we if we doubt and have questions, Satan's going to come along and he's going to say, God don't love you. Look what he's making you go through. Look at all these unbelievers who are not going through a thing and it looks like they're having fun. It looks like they're happy. And you proclaim it. Yeshua loves you. He died for you. Look at all you're going through. Them are lies of the devil. Don't allow the devil to steal your faith. When you have those things in your head, it is not the, the spirit of God. It's the enemy trying to draw you away from God so that he can torment you. Trials can even lead to, um, athe to, to, to not believing God, to atheism. If you allow those voices to tell you things that are not true. Hallelujah. When your faith is small, the devil can 
rip your face, pull you this way, pull you that way. So don't allow the devil to cause you to dwell on the evil and put despair and bitterness in, in you towards God. For all, and always remember the good times God delivered you. It was not just a coincidence that he delivered you from it. There are no coincidences with God. Call out to Adonai. Block him out Satan's voice. Get the victory in Messiah. Joseph cried out to Adonai, trust in him in all things. You know, trials teach us who we really are. Digging up the soil and let us see what we're made of. Charles Spurgeon, this is what he said. Prayer also is the best armor against trials and tribulations. A gem cannot be polished without friction. Men cannot be perfect without trials. Being on a spiritual path does not prevent you from falling. The darkness or fa a fa failing in the darkness, we have to continue trusting God. If you fall, you get back up. Amen. God gives us the strength that we have to trust Him. Not say, God, I fell. You let me fall. And just stay down. No, get up. Turn around. Do what God says to do. Get up and keep going. When you teach your child to walk, when they fall down, you say, get up, you can do it, come on. And, and you say, come on, come to me. That's what Yeshua does. He says, get up, come on, I'm here, come on, I'm going to help you. And you get up and you say, yes, I can do it. In the name of Yeshua, I can do it, Father, I know you're with me. And we continue to go, and we, we know that he's helping us get through. It also, these trials and tribulations teaches us how to use the darkness as a tool to grow, not to fall down and get worse, but to get up and trust in God. We have to go through a growing period of time. We have to go through the maturing process in our life because our spirits must grow in God. Amen. We have to decrease and he must increase in us that we can't, that he can use us. Joseph was in God's boot camp, basically. He was being trained by Adonai himself to be a great leader and to save people, not only his family, but many others from different nations. Joseph had to learn to trust Adonai so that he could be a great leader used by Adonai. Hallelujah. In the Tanakh, the Old Testament writers use seven different words that all mean trust. But each one has a different understanding of trust. So looking at the understanding of the word all together, if we look at these words all together and understand them, we can see the bigger picture. Understanding the word batak, which is trust. The word faith literally carries the definition of all seven Hebrew words for trust. When we put our faith in God, we put our trust in him. Hallelujah. Trust. It is a Ha, 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 hasha, trust, it is a verb and it means to seek, to take refuge. Um, we can also go through Second Samuel 22, 3. He is our shelter and he's our providing uh, refuge. Hallelujah. Beta is confidence and it means expressing feeling of security. Um, that's what you feel when you rely on someone. Um, Amen. It is uh, also towards the word trust. To build up, it means to nurture, to believe in, to be certain. Hallelujah. Um, also, we have uh, Yahid, which is to wait, to hope, expect. Metat is to trust, to be confident, refer, and it refers to a person or thing that you put your trust in. Cool. It is to whirl like a circle, dance to shake. Use, it's used to describe an anxious waiting to describe even labor pains. It also describes Adonai's creative work. Nakshat is also, again, these are words that relate to trust. It means under, hallelujah, thank you, Father. Under designated refuge or shelter. So it's indicating a place of safety and protection. So all of these seven are related to the word trust. 
So Joseph could not have advanced to the position Yahweh had for him without complete faith and trust in Yahweh. Joshua, look at what, what, what happened to Joshua. He had to also have complete trust and faith in Adonai to be the leader, to be able to take the position that God had for him to lead the people into the promised land. They needed what we all needed today, complete faith in Yahweh, which is trust too. So when we truly put our faith, trust in the Lord, we are seeking shelter in him. We are confident in his shelter. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Adonai. When we are truly formed in our trust and faith, we then are certain God will do what he says. We don't have no doubt. We have that confidence in him. And we do not need to look for alternate, alternative answers. As people, we are, as people of faith, we wait with hope and expectation, trusting in Adonai. Trust in Adonai usually don't happen overnight, especially if you're not growing in the Torah. The things Adonai showed Joseph was, and Joshua was conditioned upon Joseph turning to God, not against God, or Joshua turning to God, not against God. Trusting God is working through, on our behalf, through the problems that we face, of course, with his help. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 and 18. God was preparing Joseph to be a great leader. Thinking about, you know, the leaders that we have today, we may have many who do not know Adonai, and their leadership is ran on their feelings, on their knowledge of the world. Great leaders who know God have the fear of God in them and will be obedient to God and use godly wisdom to rule. We see this in many of God's rulers in the Torah. We see him in David, we see him in um, Joseph, and, and it just goes on and on. If you really love God, you will have his character also, and that is to love, and you will love, and have compassion on others, serving many, and you can save many. God, Yeshua came as a servant, and that's what we need to be, a servant to others, and we are able to uh, help them get through hardships. Yosef loved Adonai. He trusted him through all that he went through, and he cared, and so there he cared for others. As he matured in the Lord, he understood the ways of God and was became more loving and forgiving. So all that Joseph went through gave him great faith in Adonai. He didn't complain and lose faith and hope in God. It made him stronger. Today we might say, the devil is doing a good job of stealing my faith. No, 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 no. That's an opening that you've given to the devil to allow him to steal your faith, to steal your hope and your faith, your trust in Adonai. And we have to remember all the time that God brought us out of these horrible things. We have to remember the good things that he saved us from. And when you um, think about it, your, your faith grows in Adonai. And think about there was no way that you could make it unless it was God. It had to be God that helped you and brought you out of it. And God says, is there anything too hard for me? No, there's nothing too hard for Adonai. So at these times in our lives, we must turn to Adonai with all of our heart, with our trust, and see his hand move. Yosef was in a place where it looked like there was no hope. But he continued to trust God, and he ministered to people. The devil cannot steal your faith if you do not allow him to. Keep your faith and trust in him. Keep your confidence in Adonai, and wait in hope. Do not go to, by your human senses and what you think and what you feel. Don't put your trust in man. Trust in God. Even if you don't see it, trust in God. Many unbeliever, many people who are leaders who are unbelievers, they will try to force you to lose your faith in God and to trust in them. They're going to put doubt and they're going to put these thoughts in your mind so that you can put your trust in them and in their ways. Like, like Antiochus Epiphanes did. He tried to persuade the Jews to surrender to his ways and they, that they would be better for the people. 
He tried to make them believe that. He tried to make them think that his God was better. And many feared and they turned to Anti uh, Anti Anti Antiochus rather than God. They trusted in man, not in God and his protection. They turned to paganism instead of trusting God no matter what they would go through. See, God says you will go through, you will suffer. So if we know that, then we say, okay, God, you said I'm going to suffer, I'm going to go through this, but you will be with me. I'm standing on your word. I believe you love me. I know that you said you're going to be with me, so no matter what suffering I go through, I know that you are with me to bring me through it. Don't turn to paganism just not to suffer. Because if you go that way, if you turn against God, there's hell. And the Bible says it has a mouth wide open. But turn to the Lord. Hallelujah. He's made a place for us in paradise for him, to be with him. So those who kept their faith in God refused to bow to Baal. And God rose them up. Those who refused to bow to the enemy, God rose them up as great leaders. They helped people to overcome fear in the enemy, and they put, they helped them, people learn to trust in the one true God. God's people won, amen, uh, through the whole Torah, and even through the Hanukkah story that we go through. Even in our lives now, God's people won, taking their victory of freedom over evil. Some of the apostles said they counted it a privilege to be martyred for him. They went through persecution, but with faith in God, and they became more than conquerors. Yeshua wants us to rise above fear. He wants us to rise above our enemy. And he wants us to trust in him. So now, I mean, we've, all of our life we go through these different things, but today we are going through some really strange things that have never had happened in our lifetime. And so we find ourselves going through problems and things that we never dreamed that would happen to us. If you feel like you just can't take it no longer and you don't know what to do, cry out to the Lord. Trust in God. He will hear your cry. He sees your tears. Cry out unto him. If you find yourself with a report from the doctors that say you have a sickness or an incurable disease. Call out to God. Nothing's impossible for him. Put your trust in him. But stand in him no matter what. Hear the word of the Lord. And he's saying again, nothing is impossible for him. Hear the word of the Lord. There's nothing impossible for him. Hallelujah. If you find yourself down and you feel like giving up, hold on, hallelujah, hold on to God's word in hope and in trust. We are people of faith, amen, we're people of faith. We have faith in our God and we will be persecuted one way or another, but we overcome through Yeshua, through the blood of Yeshua. John 16, 33. And also, we learn from our forefathers the examples in the Torah. They kept their faith in God, even unto death. Hebrews talks about the, it's the whole book of faith. Some of them died without seeing what they believed in. Abraham didn't see the city here, but he believed in the, in the heavenly city. He was looking for that. He was looking for that, not for what was here. He was looking to the heavenly city, hallelujah. But he knew his generation was going to receive it. So we learn from our forefathers. They kept their faith in Adonai, even unto death. They were overcomers to, um, in this world. And you know, may, the world may have seen them as losers, but they were not losers. They overcame the world, and they entered into eternity with their God, our God, hallelujah. They won. Romans 8, 18 again. For the sufferings of this present time are not worthy. They're not worthy to be compared to the great and mighty things that our God has in store for us. 
So no matter what you're going through, trust in the Lord. We see that Joseph went through a very hard, hard time, not only physically, but mentally, spiritually. But he caught the word of God. He called on God. God was with him and he seen God bring him through, you know, through the prison he was made the head person. Everywhere he went, God opened the doors for him and he was in leadership and he was learning. He was going through these things. He could have said, I don't want to help nobody here. Look where you still have me, God. But he didn't. He used the time that he had where he was to be used of God. And all that time he was being, he was learning and God was teaching him and preparing him for the position that he put him in to be able to help not only Egypt, but the whole world. God wants us this way. We are people of faith. We shouldn't be talking down all the time. We need to talk God's word, amen? We, as people of faith, God wants us to receive his word he wants us to believe it with all of our heart that he, his Holy Spirit will arise up within us. No matter how we feel, if we feel sick or we get a bad report, I choose to believe the report of the Lord. Yeah. There's so many things going on right now, but I choose to believe the report of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. There's been many good believers that have lost their loved ones to COVID, but they're standing. They're standing on the word of God. They knew that their spouse or their child, whoever it was, they knew that they loved God and they knew that they were going to be in a better place and they know that one day they're going to be with them again. We got to trust God, amen? Eh? No matter what we see, no matter what we fall through, God said, you will suffer, but it makes us strong. We don't want to believe that. We don't want to accept that because we don't want to suffer. But we have to crucify our flesh. And as we crucify our flesh, as we go through these things, God says, you become stronger so that we can stand <laughs> and we can teach others. There's hope. Hold on to the things of Adonai. Amen. He's coming soon. Thank you, Father. Let's stand. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to uh, say the prayer. We're going to go ahead and we're going to pray for, uh, we're going to just do a prayer for whoever needs it right now. I know many people are going through things, including, I mean, this is the world we live in. We go through these. We have to learn to overcome it. We have to learn to go through it. Amen in the spirit of God. <clears throat> thank you, Father. We thank you, Adonai, for your word. We thank you, Lord, that you said you would never leave us and that you would never forsake us. Lord God, help us, Lord God, to stand on your word, to believe you no matter what, Father God, to believe you, Lord God, and to know that you are truthful. You are truth, and you will never lie. You cannot lie. And that you said you're going to be with us, and you will be with us. Help us, Lord God, to do all according to your word, Father God, that we will be pleasing unto you, and that when we see you face to face, you will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Thank you, Father. And that we will not be weary in well-doing, because we know, Lord God, that we're doing it through love, whatever we do, if we do work to help the body of Christ, the congregation, or if we give, we're given because of you, Father. We give not only finances, but we give of ourselves, Lord God. Lord God, take selfishness away, Lord God. That we know that we are humbling ourselves before you because we love you and we know this is what you would do. You wash the disciples' feet. Help us, Lord God. To be like you. Help us to put on your character, Father. Oh, hallelujah, that your Holy Spirit will just move upon us right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
Father, we thank you, Lord God, as you touch those who are going through trials right now, tribulations, afflictions in their body, Lord God. Those that are being afflicted in their mind, Father. Lord God, we stand in with them, Lord God. We stand in for them, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for your word, Lord God. And Lord God, we know your will is, Lord God, to be with us and to help us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, as we choose to believe your report. Lord God, we thank you no matter what, for by your stripes we are healed, Father. We thank you, Lord, for removing the torment from people's minds right now. Remove the torment from their mind, Father. Touch their bodies, Father God. Those, Lord God, that have just come out of surgery, Father. Those that are having uh, chemo, whatever it be, Lord God, touch their body. Lord God, thank you for touching them, for there's nothing impossible for you. For how great is our God. How marvelous is our God. How great, Shalina, how great is our God. Hallelujah, Lord, that we can praise you and worship you with everything that is within us. That our soul can sing unto thee, Father God. That our soul will sing unto thee, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Holy Spirit, just move on your people right now. Thank you, Lord, for healing. Healing eyes, Lord God. Thank you, Father, heal backs, Lord God. Remove disease and cancers, God. Remove them in your precious name, we pray, Father. Touch hearts, Lord God. Heal their hearts. Give them strength, Lord God. And Lord God, teach your people. Teach us, Father, according to your will, how to take care of this temple, Father God, that you've given us. Lord, we just love you, Father. And Lord God, during this uh, season, Lord God, Hanukkah, Lord God, um, others that are celebrating maybe Christmas, Father, there's a lot of sometimes sorrow, Lord, because they're looking at it in the human way. But Lord God, these are times we should be rejoicing unto thee, Father God. Rejoicing unto you, Father God, for what you've done, Lord God, for our salvation and our forgiveness, Lord, and your soon return, Father. We don't condemn anybody, Father. We pray for them. And we love them that they will learn the truth, Lord God. And they will know what is an idol and what is not, Father. But Lord God, we pray that you would teach us your ways, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Let's go ahead and do the um, priestly blessing. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all just keep worshiping God. And man, this is, there's special times when we just come together to, to worship Him. May we all bless you, may we all keep you. May we all make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May we all lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And the word of the Lord says, Fear not, for I am with you. Fear not, for I am with you. Trust in the Lord always, amen. And he says to rejoice in him. And again, he says rejoice. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. You're the light of the world, Father God. We give you the glory. Let your Shekinah just fall upon us all. Lord God, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Amen. Well, we pray and thank you for joining us. And we pray that you are blessed. And um, we're going to have uh, Brother Hunter come and give you some information about our our Hanukkah dinner tomorrow um, that we're having, and we pray and that you have a great hug some air, you know, and um, hopefully you can join with us again. Well, just a
brief reminder that tomorrow night, Saturday night at 5 p.m., right here at the Methodist Activity Center here in Jefferson, we will be having our Hanukkah celebration. Um, we're already make, making preparations. Uh, we're going to have, of course, lots of food, a lot of traditional foods, uh, things made with oil to remember the oil of the um, Hanukkah. And you're certainly invited. Those in and around Marion County and the surrounding uh, county area, uh, we would love for you to join us right here again at the Methodist Activity Center right here in Jefferson, uh, just right across from, uh, from Lions Park. Now, you can always find out a little bit more about Hanukkah as well as about Bethel Temple Fellowship by going to www.bethelTemplefellowship.org. Um, on our homepage, we also post the pair of shops that you just that we read tonight. They're always updated at the very top of the homepage. And if you desire to give to this ministry to help keep the doors open to spread the good news of the gospel of Yeshua, if you click on donate at the top, there are several options of which you can make an electronic contribution, a gift uh, to uh, make things like this live stream possible. And by, again, keeping the doors open and, and spreading the gospel, not just to here in Jefferson and in Marion County, but this message goes out throughout all the United States, even uh, to other countries. Uh, so we thank you so much. So again, to, uh, tomorrow night, we also are on Facebook, which is where this is live streaming here. We're on Instagram, and we have a YouTube channel. We will upload a copy of this sermon tonight to our YouTube channel. Like, subscribe, share it with other people. Thank you so much, and how's the man? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Again, we want to thank you for <coughs> joining in with us, and you're more than welcome to come. And I'm going to have a lot of wonderful praise and worship, singing unto the Lord, and just ministering unto the Lord and having a great fellowship. Uh, you don't have to be a part of the congregation to come. We are inviting you. Amen. So we can, if you're not used to Hanukkah, we'd like to show you, we'd like to teach you about what Hanukkah is about. Thank you. God bless you, and hugs to Hugs to Remember, tell them that we care.